Hello everyone, this is Ray 1416 here with another episode of Internet Pioneers. Inspired by Mr. Medicare's Internet Insanity, this series talks about the people that were innovative in terms of entertainment, information, etc. Today's subject in question is Tim Berners-Lee, the man that pioneered the World Wide Web in 1989. Without Berners-Lee, the Internet would be a primitive service for the government instead of the people. How did the World Wide Web become a phenomenon? Let's go back to the beginning to get a history lesson on Tim Berners-Lee. Tim Berners-Lee was born Timothy John Berners-Lee on June 8, 1955 in London, England. He is the son of Conway Berners-Lee, a mathematician and a computer scientist. Berners-Lee graduated Queen's College of Oxford in 1976 with a degree in physics. This was an essential degree because of how physics and math combined helped develop the World Wide Web. During the mid-1980s, Berners-Lee worked diligently to combine a hypertext transmission protocol with domain system ideas. After countless experiments, the success of Berners-Lee's ultimate experiment would become known as the World Wide Web. This became exclusive property for a European company called CERN, to which is translated to European Organization for Nuclear Research. That's right, the World Wide Web was to help the government, military, and universities. Then what happened in 1993? In 1993, the World Wide Web became public domain, giving revolutionary internet services including America Online to expand by taking in web browsers. As a result of the booming technological companies, the World Wide Web was discovered here in America, opening a whole new world where knowledge was vastly accessible. At this time, Tim Berners-Lee created a company in Massachusetts called World Wide Web Consortium. The purpose of this company was to help provide numerous internet service providers the tools to improve the internet quality without charging royalties nor cause any patent infringements. As a result, new internet browsers like Netscape and Internet Explorer came about, expanding access to web browsers all over the internet. This would inevitably change life as we know it today. For example, people hardly read the newspapers because you can get news from Yahoo and Google. Another example, you don't see encyclopedia salesmen at your door anymore trying to sell you a complete set of encyclopedias. Tim Berners-Lee not only changed how we obtain information, but also allowed us to create our own style of entertainment. After the dot-com bubble burst of the year 2000, Berners-Lee did work for multiple companies all around the world and gives lectures regarding mathematics and physics. Without the World Wide Web, we cannot access information easily. Entertainment would be bland. We could not increase our chances of getting discovered by multiple media outlets. Nothing. And that is why Tim Berners-Lee is an internet pioneer. Anyway, I'm Ed Ray, and I'm out of here.